So good afternoon, everybody. My name is, my name is Thomas Strasser. I'm from the Austrian Institute of Technology, and it's my pleasure to, uh, to uh, welcome you to our webinar called Demonstration of Multi-Research multi Infrastructure Integration Tests, which is an outcome which shows results from uh, the European uh, research project called Iriquit. It's a um, research infrastructure project um, funded in the Horizon 2020 uh, frame. Uh, today, uh, we will give you an overview about what we have developed in our project. But before that, uh, I want to give you some uh, administrative uh, information before we start uh, with the presentation itself. So um, the, the, meet, uh, the webinar will be recorded and we will provide uh, the recorded uh, webinar later on uh, on the online platform. Uh, in order to access that, uh, we will uh, notify you when the recording is uh, online available. Uh, we also share the presentation of today uh, on a, via online platform, so you ha will have uh, all the relevant information, the recording and uh, the uh, uh, presentation uh, afterwards, so you will be notified by email. Uh, in case you have some questions uh, to the webinar, uh, I suggest that uh, you uh, ask uh, some questions uh, via the dashboard. Uh, you can type in uh, questions. Uh, please also um, provide information to whom uh, the question belongs to, to one of the speakers, uh, my project partners, and uh, we will answer all the questions uh, until the end, uh, uh, at the end of the webinar. So you can uh, type in the questions, they will be recorded, and uh, we will go through the questions uh, at the end uh, of the webinar. Uh, moreover, this uh, webinar is also supported by two IEEE uh, technical committees from Industrial Electronics Society and System and Cybernetics Society. It's a pleasure that uh, we can host this webinar also in their uh, frame. So now I think it's time to go uh, uh, to the details of the webinar. Uh, the webinar will be uh, held by uh, my project partners, uh, Luigi Pellegrino from RIC in Italy, Merkebu uh, de, de Gefer from Sintef in Norway, Dimitris Lagos from uh, NTOA in Greece, and uh, Master Seid from the University of Strathclyde. Before we go, uh, to, uh, go into detail uh, of the presentation, I want to share a brief information about our uh, Irrigate Research Project. Um, this project uh, is uh, funded under the Research Infrastructure Program of the European uh, Commission. So we are a team of 18 partners from 11 uh, different European countries. <clears throat> we are, and we are sharing about uh, 20 to, uh, 19 to 20 different uh, power system smart grid laboratories where we are working together. We are working on the uh, improvement uh, of validation and testing techniques. Uh, in the project, uh, one main outcome uh, was the holistic validation procedure. A couple of weeks ago, we gave a webinar about uh, that outcome. And uh, the uh, information about this webinar can be found on our website. Moreover, we are working on the improvement of methods and tools for uh, validation and testing, mainly simulation and hardware in the loop based. Also here, we had uh, previous webinars. They're also uh, available via our website. Uh, the main part of today's webinar is related to this uh, distributed uh, uh, and integrated research infrastructure. So there, we have developed uh, methodologies in order to make uh, joint uh, experiments. And uh, my partners now will give you an overview of what has been developed in the last couple of years in the project. Therefore, so in the agenda, we have foreseen uh, four parts. First part about multi research infrastructure integration test itself is given by Luigi. Then we switch over to uh, Merkebu. He will uh, give an example about uh, the testing of a converter controller so, uh, to a multi site testing chain. Uh, Dimitris will talk about an industrial controller validation. Um, and at the end, Maza will talk about. Uh, about the role of geographically separated real-time experiments. So that's the agenda for today. I hope you enjoy uh, the webinar. And now I will switch over to uh, Luigi, who will start with the first part of the presentation. So Luigi, the floor is yours. Thank you, Thomas, for the introduction. So hello, everyone. My name is Luigi Pellegrino. Um, I'm a researcher in RSC in Milan. 
And with this part of the webinar, I want you to introduce uh, different kinds of research infrastructure integration that uh, we have implemented and demonstrated in the context of your grid. So basically, with my speech, I will answer to two questions. The first one is, why are we talking about uh, array integration? And the second one is, how can we integrate different research infrastructure? But, okay. So to answer to the first question, I will give you an overview of a power system transition. Until 2010, as you probably know, when the renewable energy resources percentage in the mix of energy production was very limited, the power system was composed of few big plants and many non-programmable loads. So the power system was quite simple to control and the voltage and frequency were very stable. But then the rest penetration has begun to increase. So at, uh, at the moment uh, we have many rests that have replaced some traditional power plants. The energy is produced also in the medium and low voltage grids and many loads are becoming uh, active loads or generators in some cases. Unfortunately, this change introduces some unwanted voltage and frequency behavior, and that's the reason why our TSOs and DSOs are going to investigate how to mitigate this phenomenon. And finally, if we look at the power system of tomorrow, let's say, uh, we will see a lot of rest connected to the grid. Moreover, many other kinds of devices will be integrated, such as electric vehicle, energy storage system, and so on. These new devices have a, a flexibility that could be used to control the power system, of course, but we are talking about thousands and thousands of devices that have to be managed all together. So, as you can understand, this is uh, very difficult. In summary, let's say that uh, uh, the energy transition is moving the power system from something simple to something very complex. In this slide, as you can see that uh, on the left, the state, we have the state of the art for a component testing in the current uh, power system. While on the right, you can see how the testing approach has to change in order to follow the power system evolution. For instance, the hardware in the loop technique will be used more and more since it will be important to evaluate the interaction between the component the test and the power system. We should also uh, take into account uh, the communication domain as well as the other domain, for instance, uh, business domain and so on. Um, and the simulation in this uh, framework could be very useful. In the future, we should take into account also the, um, an approach that is for the testing procedures a little bit different from now. In every grid, we have developed a, what we call a holistic test description. And uh, all these three topics uh, if you are interested in, uh, you can uh, see the webinar that we have already um, done in Erigrid at this link that you, on the bottom of this uh, slide. Okay, so now that we have in mind uh, which challenge uh, will come up in the next year, we can understand why it is important, the research infrastructure integration. The main reason is that there are several research infrastructure all around the world performing experiments on smart grid. Every research infrastructure has a specific device and know-how that can be used for testing something. But now, if we imagine to use the devices of all the research infrastructure and to merge the know-how of different actors, you can understand that the number of use cases and test cases, system configuration, etc., become, uh, let's say, uncountable. Basically, the research infrastructure integration allows to exploit the synergies among the research infrastructures. But now that we have the answer to the first question, the, which um, I, we want to, uh, to know the answer to the second question, how can we integrate the research infrastructure? Here I highlighted the two different ways to integrate the research infrastructure. One is offline, comparing tests performing in different research infrastructure, and one is online, when the test is done in real time on different research infrastructure. Now, going at the laboratory level, we can find different kinds of devices in each array. For instance, for instance, here you can see software um, such as uh, Modelica or um, any other model developed in MATLAB and so on, an hardware in the loop uh, configuration or uh, a pure hardware uh, facility. 
Of course, each ORI can integrate the DV these devices. This, this is what we call uh, single array experiments. So when we are performing an experiment using uh, the devices in only one array, we can uh, talk about uh, single array experiment. But uh, looking at another research infrastructure between uh, research infrastructure one and two, we can have uh, several integrations. At this approach, uh, and this approach can be extended also to more than to a research infrastructure. In principle, uh, n uh, research infrastructure. And in this case, we can uh, have uh, many, many uh, integration um, running a, an experiment that we can call multi-research infrastructure experiment. So now that we have uh, an overview of a research of a kind of a research infrastructure integration that we can implement, I will introduce you three different concepts implemented and demonstrated in AeroGrid. My colleagues will present later a test case for each of these concepts. So the first one is the testing chain. This is an approach that includes multiple testing possibilities from a simulation where we have a model of a system configuration to a control hardware in the loop where we have the real behavior of a controller until the, the field testing where we have the real uh, system configuration in order to investigate a wide range of a smart grid functionality. This test can be used, for instance, uh, to develop a controller. Uh, adopting this uh, approach uh, is possible to increase the experimental reality step by step, reducing the time to market and decreasing the risk of failure. The second concept proposed is the integration of a software developed by, developed by one array in another array. This allows to test a control with different scenario and in a realistic condition. In this case, the integration can be done offline, installing the controller directly in the array. Uh, in this case, the uh, controller developed by the array one in the uh, facility uh, of the array two. Exchanging, or we can also do the same experiment online, installing the controller directly uh, in the RAI1 and exchanging data in real time between the RAI1 and the RAI2. The example that my colleague uh, Dimitris will show uh, is related to the first case uh, offline. So the last but not least um, concept is the coupling of uh, two geographically separated RAIs. And in this case, the goal is to integrate a remote hardware as a part of a testing. This allows to extend the system under test, avoiding additional investment in new hardware. The concept developed is to establish a point of research uh, infrastructure interconnection that emulates the physical electrical connection. This dot line that you can see uh, between the two figures. To understand how it works, you can look, for instance, at this figure where we have two geographically separated arrays, one, for example, uh, in Europe and one in USA, a cloud-based platform that we call a gender that, is, that was developed in AirGrid, and one grid following uh, on converter on one side and one grid forming a converter on the other side. Exchanging data between these two uh, converters in particular active reactive power and voltage and frequency measurements, we are able to emulate the physical electrical connection between the RAI1 and the RAI2. So this is a, a brief overview of a um, concept that uh, uh, we have developed in Neurigrid and there are uh, other concepts uh, developed that we publish uh, in a white book. And uh, um, my colleague, now we will present a test case for each of these uh, concepts. So with this slide, I finish my presentation and um, I will leave the floor to my colleagues. Thank you, Luigi, for your uh, introduction. Now we switch uh, over to uh, Merkebu. One moment, uh, please give me a second.
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, sorry. Um, yes, my name is Merka Buzanava. I'm a research scientist in Syntef Energy in Trondheim, Norway. I'm going to present one of the selected test cases, which is testing of converter controller through multi-site testing chain with varied test beds. This uh, test case is an, one of our offline research infrastructure integration test case uh, attempting to implement a test chain as a, a validation and development method of converter controller. First, I would like to, to tell something about the test system. So we have a low voltage network here connected to infinite bus and the low vol voltage uh, network has also PVs connected to it. Uh, and so the PVs has co inverter, which is a, whose controller is going to be developed, characterized and improved through this test chain implementation. So our test system mainly includes uh, a low voltage uh, network and then a converter controller, which is which has also three more components. The main focus uh, in our test implementation is the RMS converter controller, which is uh, shaded in the in the middle here. So again, uh, the test chain, uh, the state of the art in testing involves simulation, laboratory testing and field testing. And we believe that this kind of approach lacks a smooth transition from one test to another test. And it, it lacks also coverage and uh, uh, in, uh, coverage of smart grid uh, functionalities, the overall smart grid functionalities. So we believe that test chain approach can methodically uh, leverage the specific capabilities of the different implementations. That means pure simulation, controller hardware in the loop and power hardware in the loop in order to facilitate uh, um, the testing approach, minimizing the cost it requires and maximizing the fidelity and the coverage of the testing process. And so we have uh, selected a sim pure simulation, converter hardware in the loop, and power hardware in the loop for the process of developing converter controller in, a, in this test case. So the first approach is uh, to, to implement the test in pure simulation where uh, the load profiles and uh, the reference uh, models are going to be developed and prepared for the subsequent implementations. And then uh, this pure simulation implementation is followed by controller hardware in the loop and power hardware in the loop implementation. And here the main, the first process in mainly uh, attempts to uh, validate and characterize the converter controller. Uh, and we have also further two more purpose of investigations in this case, the test case where we are validating uh, the model exchange among research infrastructures and validating also improvement of converter controllers through the process. So this first process is just characterizing the first converter controller as uh, in the best case scenario. And then we will this will give input uh, feedback to the results of the pure simulation and the pure simulation tries to, uh, to suggest improvements based on the results of the outputs from converter hardware in the loop and power hardware in the loop implementation. And in the third step, we will rerun the simulation, uh, uh, the con converter hardware in the loop and power hardware in the loop implementation to validate the suggested improvements are, are working. So um, one has to keep in mind that these three implementations have been conducted by research infrastructures in three countries. So uh, there, there is a need for coordination and the method we used for coordinating this uh, test is the uh, methodology developed in Erigrid, which is called holistic test description. Uh, you can read through the, the documents in the project and also previous webinars about the, the templates. Uh, for example, here, if you go through one of the, the the branch of the from the test case, uh, the general test case to specific test specification and experiment specification. Uh, we use the templates to define what is going to be the test specification and which specific purpose is going to serve in, in, from the general testing purposes. So this shows the power hardware in the loop uh, test specification and followed by the experiment specification detailing what type of components we have been using in this test. So this template has facilitated the information exchange among the involved partners or research infrastructures, and it, it facilitated the coordinated uh, implementation of the test chain. So the first test implemented was simulation. So it has its own purpose. We're characterizing, as I said before, characterizing of the converter controller, um, 
preparing of reference models and reference uh, uh, profiles, as well as pro, uh, pro, um, suggesting uh, improvement potentials based on uh, the subsequent tests. So this uh, low voltage network, which is a modified Sigrel low, vo Sigre low voltage network was implemented uh, in simulation and the MATLAB Simulink was used in order to implement the simulation. Then the second implementation was the controller hardware in the loop, where uh, we, we used the Plex RT box, real-time box, to, to implement the Sigre low voltage grid in, for real-time simulation. And we have uh, the Texas instrument launch, launch part to, to implement the com com converter controller. This is a basically converter hardware in the loop test setup that we have implemented. And then finally, the power hardware in the loop implementation. Uh, uh, we have a Opal RT we use for simulating real time the low voltage network, which is interfaced to a 60 uh, kilowatt uh, two level converter in the laboratory through external amplifier. So here is the power hardware in the loop setup that connects the real converter, con converter, which is a two level converter, to a simulated low, CIGRE low voltage network. So we try to keep everything else similar in the three implementations while validating and characterizing the converter controller, which is the, the object under investigation in this implementation. So what we are trying to develop is the converter controller and we are validating, characterizing the co controller in three implementations, keeping all the rest of the system as much as possible to be similar. So this shows the snapshot of the first results for step response of the converter or uh, connecting the PV. So this is a PV uh, output step, uh, active power output response. Uh, so you can see the dynamics is a bit different from simulation to control hardware in the loop and power hardware in the loop. So mainly the purpose of this uh, uh, figure here is to, to, show, to showcase that, that there are specific peculiarities in the different implementations. And furthermore, here you can see uh, the, the KPI selected in this test chain. We have selected settling time, overshoot, peak time, and dumping, uh, dumping ratio for, for, for validating of the converter controller to trace the improvements and, and, and also changes from implementation to implementation. So here you see the, 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 out, the values of the KPIs for the three implementations um, for, for having a step, a step change of PV output. So the settling time, for example, varies from simulation to control hard in the loop and power hard in the loop. The overshoots also vary significantly. Um, so we have to keep a best case scenario of the three implementations separately in order to compare it, it with the imp suggested improvements. So the one, one thing to keep here in mind is it is not directly comparable as there are a lot of other factors in the power hardware in the loop, the cables connecting the amplifier to the converter and so on. So um, the comparability of the different implementations has been a, a bit of a challenge. Nevertheless, we have uh, created a best case scenario for the three implementations and then the improvements were assessed also accordingly. Uh, in the first round test, uh, there was improvements uh, suggested, which is uh, to, to change the uh, filter dumping ratio for the outer loop controller. And we have implemented that and uh, through this test chain uh, implementation, uh, we have characterized and validated the base case converter controller suggested improvements and then validated the improvements again. So the improved controller has reduced the settling time, which was uh, the improvement potential observed in the results of the three implementations. Uh, while this was achieved, it was in the expense of uh, our choose of the, from the results. So the main um, uh, uh, tool used in this test chain implementation was the holistic test description, which facilitated the exchange of the planning of the experiment in the test chain, and also facilitated the exchange of the models through the partners. Thank you very much, and I will give back to um, Thomas. Thank you, Makipu, for your interesting update on the uh, uh, test chain uh, concept. Now we uh, bring uh, you another example related to the uh, validation of an industrial controller with state-of-the-art laboratory testing methods, which is given by Dimitrios. So let's switch over to Dimitrios. Uh, Dimitris, you need to go to the presentation mode, mm -hmm. please. 
Okay. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Uh, I'm Dimitrios Lagos, and hello everyone. I'm Dimitrios Lagos from uh, the National Technical University of Athens, and uh, I'm going to present to you a test case implemented in AirGrid where an industrial controller has been validated with uh, state-of-the-art laboratory testing methods. As Luigi said, the electrical networks are becoming increasingly smarter as well as more complex uh, due to the introduction of renewable energy sources and uh, broad usage of information and communication technologies. Therefore, advanced control strategies are required to manage uh, the smart grids. And uh, these strategies uh, must be thoroughly tested and validated before they implemented in a real network. And in this right direction, rapid prototyping tools like hardware in the loop can help and be the intermediate step between simulations and field deployment. However, one of uh, the drawbacks is that uh, hardware in the loop techniques require expensive equipment uh, when you install this setup from uh, zero. Therefore, uh, collaboration between industry and research centers uh, can help uh, in faster testing of uh, these advanced uh, control algorithms. Under Edgrid Umbrella, uh, an industrial partner, a DSO, uh, has tested in realistic conditions using a control hard in the loop setup of uh, NTUA uh, to control algorithms. Uh, the industrial partner is HEDNO, which is the Greek DSO responsible for non-interconnected islands power systems operation and uh, we tested to centralize controls for non-interconnected island power systems in NTUA under real-time conditions with uh, control hardware in the loop setup, the existing dynamic security algorithm and uh, proposed uh, centralized control that uh, mainly assess the dynamic security also. Both algorithms will, were tested for uh, Rhodes Island Power System, which is the second largest non-interconnected power system in Greece. The first step was to build a dynamic model of uh, Rhodes Island in our digital real-time simulator. Uh, we designed the system with uh, the generators, uh, the governors, the automatic voltage regulators, the, the generator uh, controls. And uh, in order to have a good representation of the system, uh, we used actual measurements from uh, Rhodes Island in order uh, to have uh, similar uh, results with the measurements. The next step was to establish a connection between the digital real-time simulator and uh, the controller in order to receive measurements for our, from our simulator and send set points back to the system. And uh, finally, we can upload the test algorithms in the central controller and validate them under realistic conditions and uh, also under contingencies. I will give you also some uh, brief uh, information about uh, the algorithms tested. The current uh, control uh, that is used in the island measures the wind turbine power production and thermal units production, as well as uh, it has some input from frost forecast models about the available uh, wind turbine power. Then it calculates uh, the maximum wind turbine power that uh, can be absorbed by the system. Uh, this, is, uh, this, constraints, this is constrained mainly by the technical minimums of the thermal generators, but also from a constraint uh, that is introduced uh, for uh, security purposes, mainly in order to avoid the uh, huge frequency transients, and is selected uh, usually around 30% uh, of the load. Then all this amount of the allowed permitted wind turbine production is uh, dispatched to each wind turbine according to its uh, maximum available power and uh, the rating. And the rest of the load is covered by the thermal generators uh, 
where we calculate the new set points according to the most economic operation and the reserve requirements and technical minimum of generators. And finally, the controller sends back the set points for the thermal units and the wind turbines back to the digital real-time simulator. The second approach uh, receives the same measurements as well as the active and reactive power of the five high voltage, medium voltage substations. And then it solves an optimization problem. Uh, it's uh, like a op an optimal power flow with uh, two terms in the objective function, one that tries to minimize the production cost, and the second that tries to reduce the voltage deviation. It has also the constraints that are introduced in this problem, like uh, power balance equations, uh, voltage and angle limits, constraints on thermal generator units, constraints on wind turbines, on active and reactive power on uh, coming from the power factor, and also some dynamic frequency constraints uh, in order to avoid the huge uh, frequency deviation if a contingency occurs. I uh, have also included here a reference of, on how to derive these uh, constraints. Then uh, we compare the two methods. First, we compare them during the real-time operation. We uploaded in the digital real-time simulator a winter day scenario, uh, which has reduced demand and uh, high wind uh, power potential. And we run the both algorithms for a day, and uh, we get, gather the results in order to, to compare the voltage profiles where we can see that the second method, the proposed control, achieved less uh, voltage deviation, which is what we expected since it utilizes also the ability of the wind turbines to absorb the reactive power, but also since it uh, tries to uh, ensure dynamic security with a different method, it achieves also higher penetration levels. Then uh, the focus uh, was on the dynamic security in order to see if both algorithms uh, can achieve dynamic security. So during the real-time operation, we introduced also several contingencies through the day, uh, the disconnection of the largest wind turbines at different times. And we compare the performance of uh, both algorithms uh, on the frequency transient, we can see that in every case the limit, uh, which is the yellow line, is the setting of uh, the, first acting, the first acting under frequency load settings release, where we see that uh, the existing controls at uh, several occasions uh, doesn't ensure uh, that the frequency won't violate this uh, limit. Where the, exist, where the proposed control on every occasion uh, keeps the frequency uh, above this limit. So using this setup, we have managed to identify a weakness of the existing control. So under this test case, uh, the DSO was able to test uh, an advanced control algorithm in a research infrastructure with a state-of-the-art approach. And also, we were able to identify uh, some weaknesses of the existing uh, method compared to the proposed control that would probably be used in the future. And we also validate uh, both uh, controls uh, in realistic conditions that the control hardware in the loop uh, introduced, like uh, time delays or noise intermeasurements. And uh, as a research center, we also learn that similar approaches can promote also the collaboration between industry and research and that also state-of-the-art uh, testing approaches like hardware in the loop offer testing in realistic conditions and can decrease the time required to validate an advanced smart grid solution before the actual field implementation. That's uh, all from my side. This was the final slide. I will give the floor back to my partners. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitris. Uh, 
And now we came to the last part of our webinar today, which is related to uh, geographically real-time distribution, uh, real-time experiment uh, execution. It's given by Mother. So, Mother, the floor is yours. Yep. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mazar Syed. I'm a research associate with the Institute for Energy and Environment at University of Strathclyde. And the title of my presentation today is the role of geographically separated real-time experiments in the validation of systems readiness levels. So just to reiterate, the purpose of coupling geographically separated research infrastructures is comprehensive characterization and effective demonstration. If we look at the example on the right hand side, we have three laboratories, Lab 1, that specializes in gas turbine and energy control system, Lab 2, an optimized energy management platform, as an example, and Lab 3, an electrical power system. Now, if Laboratory 1 is undertaking an experiment for an hybrid electric aircraft, then they would put basically utilize proxy stubs for energy management platform or average models for electric power system and vice versa. If electrical power system laboratories are taking an experiment, then the gas turbine and, and the engine control system would basically be just be an average model. However, uh, coupling these research infrastructures together allows us to re attain representative system studies, that is to improve the realism of the experiment that is being undertaken and to undertake a systems level evaluation. What it also allows us to do is to undertake large systems studies. So most of the research infrastructures, as we know, have limited resources. But again, when you combine the forces of multiple research infrastructures, you are able to address one of the important topics of smart grids, that is scalability. And for example, if scalability is not the objective, then with the same similar setup, we are able to undertake detailed system studies where fidelity can be improved. Now, when power systems are two different research infrastructures need to be coupled together, there are two types of coupling options available. The first one is the asynchronous coupling, where the RMS values of the interface signals are exchanged between the research infrastructure. So from one research infrastructure, basically the voltage and frequency are sent to the other for reproduction. And then from the other research infrastructure, the power and the active and reactive power in response to those voltage and frequency are sent back to the first RI to close the loop. In this, as there is no phase information exchange, the application of such a coupling is more suited to slower dynamics. Whereas on the other hand, there is synchronous coupling where instantaneous values of interface signals are exchanged. As you can see, the voltage and phase from one RI is exchanged to the, with the other where it is reproduced and then the current and its phase in response to that voltage is sent back. Now this carries phase information and the application of such an approach is for faster dynamics and maybe even potentially transients. So now within the Edigrid project, the, the first research question that we put ourselves was whether we could utilize geographically separated RIs that have been coupled over the internet meaningfully to undertake some form of power system dynamics evaluation. And the coupling which we chose for the purpose of proof of concept for the demonstration was asynchronous and that was utilizing the newly developed gender. Now, the methodology for evaluation was basically a benchmark approach where first we take a monolithic implementation, that is we undertake a test case implemented only within one research infrastructure, and the results that we obtain from that will serve as a reference for comparison. And then again, the same experiment is undertaken with multiple RIs and then the results, which are geographically separated, of course, and the results are compared. Now, the use case that we chose is that of a coordinated voltage control. The distribution network that we have utilized is on the left hand side, as you can observe. It has a few loads, a few a battery energy system, a storage system, 
uh, and a couple of PVs and the voltage of this distribution network without the coordinated voltage is on the right hand side and you can see the peak value of the voltage is around 0.27 kV for bus number seven. Now the objective was to implement CVC and this CVC coordinates the onload tap changer, the BESS unit and the capability of the PV inverters to control the reactive power. And here is the, the controller and power hardware in the loop experimental setup. The distribution network is modeled within the DRTS and simulated at a time step of 15 microseconds. And one of those buses, basically, uh, as you can see, the PV number four is replaced by an actual piece of hardware, which is a lead acid battery physically present at RSC in Italy. And this part shows the information that is exchanged between the Dynamic Power Systems Laboratory in Glasgow and the laboratory RSC microgrid in Italy. We have a local Redis and also a web Redis through which the information is exchanged between the two research infrastructures. This basically completes the power hardware in the loop implementation. But in addition to that, we also have a controller hardware in the loop where the coordinated voltage control is implemented. There are several signals that are being exchanged at any given time, uh, but the CVC, the use case or the test scenario is for 24 hours. And CVC only activates once every 15 minutes. Because this is a real time study, we have rated the, the simulations and one second of real time would represent one minute of the real world. So basically 15 seconds in simulation would be 15 minutes of real time. And because it is still a very complicated setup, we took a staged approach to its validation. Uh, the first one was to make sure that the exchange of real time data between the different partners is working. It's just a figure for an example where the control signal was being sent and was being reproduced at the part of the execution. The, the second one was to undertake a remote hardware in the loop coupling. So again, over here, we were sending the signal and the remote RI was implementing it. And then we were, this is just plots the uh, measured power from our end. So this basically completes the HIL coupling between the research infrastructures. And then once these two steps have been undertaken, the third one would be the actual test use case implementation, which is the CVC. The results for CVC are on the screen. And as you can see, the voltage now is below 0.255 compared to where it was before at 0.277. Now CVC of course, regulates the voltage as desired, but as you can see that there is an obvious difference between the monolithic, which is the solid line and the geographically separated. Looking at the CVC participating devices. So on the left hand side top, you have the active power of the PVs, which we are not controlling, uh, but that is what is causing the voltage violations. On the right hand side, you have the reactive power that is being and there is an obvious difference between the monolithic simulate the set points and the one response that comes from the actual hardware. It is, uh, as you can see, a little bit delayed. Although only bus 11 is where the actual hardware is connected, the impact of that delay, the impact of that actual hardware is felt at the other buses as well. The OLTC response is shown in this figure. It is quite similar, except for slight delay at some points, as can be noticed. And then we have the battery energy storage system as well. Again, similarly, there are some minor differences. Now, the lessons that we've learned are, of course, some differences are expected. But again, some differences can be minimized as well. We have identified a list of immediate improvements that will be undertaken. Um, one of them was to have higher update rates than what we have actually utilized. The other one was to have asynchronous update at every interface, so different Redis that we have. Uh, then to have 
possibly implement an orchestrator to facilitate the data, facilitate the data exchange, and then also to limit the, the time delay or the impact of the time delay between the two research infrastructures, implementing a feed forward time delay compensating control. So coming to conclusions, uh, within this Eregret project, what we have done is we have proven the feasibility or demonstrated the feasibility of making geographically separated research infrastructures and undertaking studies, smart grid control studies, such as the CVC. And as we have seen that the approach promises a number of discrete benefits that are very relevant to the changes the modern power system and the errors that we have seen, they are, we are currently undertaking ongoing investigations in order to minimize those errors. And then by doing this, by the experiments that we've run, we are also contributing to the ongoing effort to realize a unified architecture for geographically separated research infrastructures. Uh, so with this, I will conclude and I'll give back to Thomas. Thank you, Mother for a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, so we are uh, done with the, with the webinar now. Uh, now we have time for a couple of questions. There have been already some um, asked by the audience. Uh, the first one uh, is from Mr. Ramakrishnan and he asks, uh, I think the question goes to Dimitrios, uh, when renewables uh, are added, how will you compensate the inertia in real time? Can you explain how uh, inertia can be emulated? So, Dimitrios, okay. please. If I understand correctly, he refers that uh, if we increase uh, renewable energy sources in the system, we have to disconnect probably some synchronous generators. And uh, therefore, we have a reducing of uh, inertia in the system. Uh, this is already the case in the island, so that's why I they use this dynamic limit of 30% of the load. So this test case showed that uh, a different approach to see how much inertia you have and uh, what uh, will be the frequency transient were used, because this approach of putting a limit on 30%, let's say, of the load could be sometimes optimistic or even pessimistic and uh, you can have uh, severe frequency transients. As Thomas said, uh, in order to avoid that, also renewable energy sources can help in the provision of uh, inertia in the system, uh, despite they have no synchronous connection to the system. They can, for example, control their uh, active power based on uh, frequency measurements and uh, provide emulated inertia services or uh, frequency response services very fast in order to mitigate the transient that causes the, the frequency deviation. I think that uh, answers yep. the questions. So ah, uh, I think uh, this is uh, what I should uh, propose uh, to, to compensate the lack of inertia. Uh, I don't know if uh, this covers the question. I think this covers the question. Yep, uh, that was uh, that is the case. <laughs> so good. Then let's come to the next question. Uh, that's uh, asked by Mr. Singh, and he wants to know a bit more about uh, the Xanta concept itself. Uh, what is it exactly? Are there any synchronous update tests done until now? So I think the uh, question goes to Luigi. Luigi, please. Yes. So Jander is basically a cloud-based software um, composed of a set of uh, tools that uh, allows to exchange data among the research infrastructure. Um, we use um, Redis as a database and uh, many other um, tools developed by um, our colleagues and uh, you can find it uh, on github because uh, it is it, it is an open uh, source software and um, 
yes, we have already tested it and use it to perform the experiment that uh, you saw in this webinar. And so, and many other uh, tests. We have uh, uh, developed uh, three different levels of gender. The first one uh, is, uh, let's say, custom, because we use uh, um, a terminology uh, defined uh, within the consortium of Evergrid. And the second one, but uh, on top, on the top of this uh, um, la layer, we can. Uh, develop uh, many other um, protocols uh, standard and uh, standards for instance we have already developed uh, uh, a converter to for use uh, to use uh, uh, the iec 61850 protocols as well as the uh, common interface model um, so uh, on github you can already found um, gender level zero one and two so uh, the, the basic uh, uh, software, the standard software, and also the converter for the IC61850 uh, um, protocol and uh, the, conver the converter also for the SIM uh, protocol. Uh, we can also, uh, if you need, uh, I, I can send you the website where you can find this uh, software. I'm just providing the response answer already. One moment, uh, it will be available in just a couple of uh, seconds. Um, I think we uh, have a next question uh, that's uh, asked by Mr. C here. Uh, it goes to uh, all of the presenters. Uh, it's a general question about uh, the possibility, uh, possible impact of uh, 5G technology on multi-research infrastructure integration studies. Do you think it may allow faster integration? So who wants to answer that question? Yeah, Thomas, I can try to answer that. I think it'll definitely... Martin, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it'll definitely help. So as we know, the, the objective of trying to push the simulations is as close to real time as possible. So with as fast internet as possible, then we are able to minimize the latencies that will be involved and that is exactly the objective so you know hopefully with the introduction of 5g and the the uh, backbone network that it provides we will be able to push the simulations further so not just asynchronous but also synchronous looking at faster dynamics or and even possibly transients thank you mother I hope that uh, explained the question. Uh, we have another question, uh, which is uh, from Sant Mr. Santam. Uh, do you, do C Hill and P Hill leads uh, a way to have cyber physical systems? If so, what can be the ways to implement? Um, maybe I can no, say uh, something about. Was... Yep, this nope. uh, Yes, um, so cyber physical systems, I understand it, it, it is the combination of the power system and the ICT platform. Um, at, in the implementation we, we did in, in the test cases, um, it was only the power system which is tested uh, in the control hardware in the loop and power hardware in the loop setup. Uh, but the, there is a, a possibility of uh, including uh, some sort of co-simulation or co-emulation Co-simulation meant to use uh, uh, dedicated simulators like uh, network simulators, NS3 and so on, uh, to, to, to simulate together the, with the power system and, and conduct the test. And co-emulation is some, some sort of uh, uh, network infrastructure implemented in, in, uh, in using certain routers and so on in the lab. And you can conduct the power hardware in the loop and control hardware in the loop together. So the options are to use certain hardwares uh, network uh, switches and uh, in the lab together with the power system setup, or the most obvious obvious one is to use co-simulation uh, uh, and and then include it in the real-time simulation for the communication part. Thank you. Thank you, Mekibu. Uh, 
And then we have another question. Uh, again, for Mr. C here. Uh, another gen uh, general question: All of the presenters have you tried simulation, simultaneous testing involving three or more infrastructures? Did you face additional difficulties compared to integration of two uh, research infrastructures? So, who wants to answer that question? Yeah. I can answer to this question, maybe. Richard, please. Okay. So, yes, we have already tried also to run perform an experiment uh, on three with three research infrastructure uh, the results that we have shown regarding the the last test cases um, was performed sorry the uh, last test case was performed also with three research infrastructure um, we didn't find any um, issue related to a higher number of uh, uh, research infra integration, research infrastructure integration, because uh, um, Jander, as I said, is a cloud-based platform. So, if you use uh, one, two, three, or uh, ten research infrastructure at the same time, you don't see any difference. You can uh, increase the uh, performance of a machine on the cloud, and uh, you can. Uh, uh, integrate uh, all the research infrastructure you want. Um, but uh, I, as Mazer said, using this kind of platform, uh, we cannot perform uh, um, fast, uh, uh, we cannot perform an experiment with fast dynamics. Uh, we have to take into account that the latency of this platform is uh, in the order of uh, uh, 0 0.5 seconds or one second it depends um, it is not it is a platform and not deterministic platform so we have to manage uh, this uh, this uncertainty the uncertainty due to your internet but the answer is yes we can you have already test uh, uh, perform experiment with three or more uh, research infrastructure <laughs> So thank you, uh, Luigi, for the answer. Uh, uh, we have another question from Mr. Santam. Uh, he asks about uh, multi-agent uh, interaction. What can be the latency between two systems? Do latency have potential impact uh, in integration? Who wants to answer the question? Well, that's a sufficient answer. Uh, I can try to. I mean, so basically the, the question was on if multi-agent systems are utilized, what would be the latencies between them? So if I understand the question right, then uh, the answer to that is we did undertake another set of experiment where it was a controller hardware in the loop implementation and three laboratories were involved. So one laboratory in Glasgow, uh, one laboratory in France and one laboratory in Singapore. So the power system was being simulated in Singapore, whereas the controllers were being simulated within uh, Glasgow and France. Uh, and the latencies for communication with Singapore were of the order of 120 milliseconds. Now, again, this is very dependent on what type of technology you used for communications. So this is not based on gender. This was not based on web-based communication. This was just a direct communication. And when we did the direct communication, the latencies between and the Singapore and UK were about 120 milliseconds. Whereas we've also done some form of ping tests within Europe, and I can say that the the return time is less than 50 milliseconds across Europe. So yeah, it does limit us to so having these delays, we wouldn't be able to undertake transient simulations. But again, for dynamic studies, I think it is still very applicable. Hope that answers the question. Uh, thank you, Martha. Uh, there's another question uh, from Mr. Singh. Uh, is there any related res uh, research uh, to power quality and flexibility services in your grid project? Uh, 
in the maybe I can brief. answer that question. So, or, um, okay, yeah, please. No, if you, I, I, think, I know that uh, in the in the work package, uh, which we perform all these these cases, we didn't perform any experiment uh, related to the power quality or uh, flexibility, but. Uh, I'm quite sure that uh, very, there are some uh, test cases in the transnational access uh, uh, framework uh, related to the power quality. I can check and uh, send uh, the case. Yeah, maybe, maybe I can uh, provide some additional uh, information here. So generally in the Irrigate project itself, it developed uh, validation and testing methods uh, using uh, simulation-based and laboratory-based approaches. Uh, we also worked on this uh, coupling of uh, research infrastructures. So in general, we worked on, on, on the methods and the tools and we um, selected some uh, test cases which we have uh, implemented and demonstrated. Uh, but as Luigi uh, outlined, we have also a kind of an exchange program where external researchers and engineers can use our developments and our uh, research infrastructures. Uh, that's the so-called transnational access program and in some of them uh, we have performed uh, power quality related uh, uh, studies uh, for example currently in the, uh, here at EIT uh, my colleagues are currently supporting a, a group from Cyprus they are currently testing uh, uh, fault rate zoo uh, and anti-islanding uh, uh, functions uh, of uh, uh, converters for for example, for a PV uh, plant uh, with the uh, Cyprus uh, Island uh, as a use case, but there are still a couple of other um, uh, reports, uh, experiments that have been performed. Uh, for that, uh, I might refer to the um, implemented projects, um, this uh, external uh, uh, transnational access user projects. You can find information on our project website. I will share the link. Uh, uh, of it uh, in a couple of seconds. So, a moment. The Uh, information is now available. Uh, okay, that was the uh, the last question that we received so far. One moment, let me recheck. Yep. Uh, so that's the last call for additional questions before we end the webinar. If you have uh, uh, if some uh, uh, questions or uh, other. Uh, um, issues pop up uh, after the end of the webinar, you're also invited to, to contact us uh, by email or we can set up also, if, uh, if necessary, a separate uh, conference call in order to, to answer some of your questions. Uh, overall, I hope you enjoyed um, our webinar, all the uh, presentations from my partners. I want to thank especially uh, Luigi, Masa, Merkibu, uh, and Dimitris for the presentation uh, today and also for the preparation of the slides. Um, you will find uh, more information about our project uh, at our project website. I shared also in the, at the website in, uh, address in our uh, in the um, chat uh, window. You can uh, discover here additional uh, uh, results, uh, reports, uh, publications uh, that emerged out of the project project itself is uh, almost over, so we will finish it uh, by end of April next year. But I have some very good information uh, information or information to you that we are extending the project. Uh, it will go in a second phase. Uh, the, uh, it's called, uh, the new project is called Irrigate 2.0 and we will start uh, with our work uh, in April next year. And in this new project, uh, which will end in September 2024, we will provide again uh, possibilities to access our laboratories. Uh, so uh, in this transnational access, so if you are interested in the future uh, about this exchange possibilities in order to use our services also tied in our laboratories and infrastructure, uh, so, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, submit a kind of uh, mini proposals. Or, 
the uh, first call for this uh, Irrigate 2 transnational access possibilities will be uh, published in the second quarter of next year. So please uh, be tuned and uh, look uh, from time to time uh, at our project website. You might also register to our uh, newsletter in order to uh, get informed about uh, any news and uh, the follow-up projects. You posted the uh, uh, newsletter um, uh, subscription site there, so feel free to register and uh, stay in contact uh, with us. I think it's now time uh, to close this uh, webinar. Many thanks to all of you for uh, your attention and I hope you had an uh, interesting afternoon and get some uh, news about our developments. You might be also uh, interested in using our developments. So some of the uh, developments are provided as open access tools. Uh, please feel free to use them and share it also with your colleagues. So thank you very much for attending this webinar and I wish you a nice afternoon. Goodbye.